students welcome back to another amazing session of social only on classroom tv so students in today's class we would be dealing with chapter 8 under social and political life 1 so this chapter is all about rural livelihoods rural livelihoods in previous chapters we have dealt with the administration which we can see in rural areas or villages so in today's class we would be dealing what would be the livelihoods of people or occupations of people who stay in villages right fine let's begin with this wonderful lesson in the first chapter we looked at the many kinds of diversity in our lives we also explored how living in different regions has an effect on the work people do the kinds of plants trees crops or things that become important to them so as we all know so we have we know that india is a country india is a country of diversity right so here in first chapter we have dealt with like we explored how people living in different regions have an effect on their work what they do and the kinds of plants or trees or crops they plant so all these things we have dealt in previous classes so now it is important that where people live and how that particular occupation or livelihood affects them how the environment affects them also matters so now in this chapter we will look at the different ways in which people earn their living in villages and here too as in the first two chapters we will examine whether people have equal opportunities to earn a living we will look at the similarities in their life situations and in the problems that they face so here in this chapter we will be dealing with different ways in which people live in village see how do they earn money in the village livelihood of people in the village and here too as the first two chapters as we have seen in first two chapters we are going to examine whether people have equal opportunities of living and earning yes and we will also look the similarities in their life situations and also the problems they face so about all this we would be dealing today's class so here we would be studying a detailed study about kalapattu village right which is in tamil nadu right children kalapattu is a village that's close to the sea coast in tamil nadu people here do many kinds of work as in other villages here too there is non farm work such as making basket utensils pots bricks bullock carts etc so here here kalapattu is a village which is very close to the sea coast as you can see over here here is the map and as you can see here is tamil nadu right and kalapattu is over here it's very near to the sea coast and then as you can see as they have elaborated this area where is kalapattu here is kalapattu right it is near to sea coast right children so here people here do many kinds of works for their livelihood as in other villages here too there are non farming works such as making baskets people make baskets right and also they make utensils pots bricks bullock carts etc so non farming activities non farming works are also encouraged in this particular village there are people who provide services such as blacksmith nurse and teachers washermen weavers barbers cycle repair mechanics and so on there are also some shopkeepers and traders as we can see over here people who provide services as you know blacksmiths are there nurses are there and as you can find teachers doctors and you have washermen weavers barbers so all types of people are involved in this particular village and they provide services to the people living over here in the main street which looks like a bazaar morning and snacks like vadai bonda and mysore park in the evening so here we can find that people who uh, like when they visit the main street which looks like a bazaar in the morning and in the evening they have certain snacks so you know what is vada 
right vadai right so this is vadai and this is bonda and this is mysore pak so some of them are your favorites right so all these types of snacks maybe in the morning and also in the evening for the breakfast and as well as snacks they prepare over there near the tea shops in the corner lives a blacksmith's family whose home serves as their workshop next to their home is a cycle hire and repair shop so here at the end or at the corner of the tea shops there are there lives a blacksmith who is a blacksmith one who like molds iron and yeah copper things right he makes iron axes and all so blacksmith lives over there and his home serves as their workshop his home is his workshop okay he lives at the corner of the street and next to their home is a cycle hire and repair shop and next to that they have a cycle home that is cycle repair shop or a cycle hire shop right and two families earn a living by washing clothes and here you can find people wash clothes and then they live by that particular work there are two families who earn their living by washing clothes of people there are some people who go to the nearby town to work as construction workers and lorry drivers the village is surrounded by low hills so here as we can see people there are some people who go to nearby towns yeah and then they work as uh, construction workers and lorry drivers so that is how they earn their livelihoods so here in this village you find two people like two families who wash clothes of others right dobis and paddy is the main crop that is grown in irrigated lands so here the major crops as you can see in this particular village is paddy so paddy is the major crop in most of these irrigated lands most of the families earn a living through agriculture so most of the families they earn money only through agriculture there are some coconut groves around cotton sugarcane and plantain are also grown and there are mango orchards so here as you can see this is sugarcane yes children and here is a cotton plant cotton plant so like this there are many other things which are grown in that village so people depend upon agriculture more than any other occupation so let us now meet some people who work in the fields in kalapattu and see what we can learn about farming from them so here as they are going to that place in that kalapattu village now let's see okay about some farmers or some workers who work in the farming and let's learn some things from them so first is tulasi tulasi all of us here work on ramalingam's land he has 20 acres of paddy fields in kalapattu even before i was married i used to work on paddy fields in my parental village i work from 8:30 in the morning till 4:30 in the evening and karuthamma ramalingam's wife supervises us so here she explains tulasi explains us as she shares us her experience so we can learn many things from her she shares that all of us here work on ramalingam's land so ramalingam is a land owner so now she explains that he has 20 acres of paddy fields in kalapattu so she says he has 20 acres of land field in kalapattu and then she says that ramalingam's land okay is the place where we work and she shares that even before she was married she used to work in paddy field in her parental village but after marriage also she came here and she starts working by 8:30 in the morning until 4:30 in the evening she works in that ramalingam's field and kartamma who is ramalingam's wife supervises the workers who work in their field This is one of the few times in the year that I find regular work. Now I am transplanting the paddy. When the plants have grown a bit, Ramalingam will call us again for weeding and then finally once again for harvest harvesting. So here she says that 
this is one of the few times in the year that I find regular work. Now she shares about her regular work. She says that this is one of the few times that they, the work is available for them. That means all throughout the year this work would not be there for them. Right? And she says, now I am transplanting the paddy when the plants have grown a bit. So here, usually transplanting paddy is a major work in the agricultural field or farming. So whenever like they sow the seeds and then they as the seeds bud up and then you can find small plants, then they take that paddy plants and then they start transplanting those grown, bit grown plants in different area. So that is what, how they do the transplanting. And then after this, Ramalingam will call us again for weeding and then finally once again for harvesting. So she says that Ramalingam will call again for weeding and also for the harvesting time when everything is done. So this is how the work is. So as you can see over here, this is how plant transplantation takes place, especially in in the terms of paddy. So here they hold they are holding a bunch of plants in their hands and they are transplanting, as you can see over here, right? Yeah, children, you can see people transplanting those plants in the particular land. When I was young, I could do this work with no difficulty. But now, as I grow older, I find bending for long hours with my feet in water very painful. Ramalingam pays 40 rupees per day. So here she says that when she was young or small, it was very easy. It was, she was not, she didn't feel any difficulty in doing this work. But as she grew older, she says that I find bending for long hours that too in water is very difficult for me. And she says it's very painful. Ramalingam pays 40 rupees per day. This is a little less than what laborers get in my home village. But I come here because I can depend on him to call me whenever there is work. Unlike others, he does not go looking for cheaper labor from other village. So here she says that this is a little less. She, say, she says that she gets 40 rupees per day. But she says, yeah, of course, this is less amount than what laborers get in my home village. But I come here because I can depend on him to call me whenever there is work. So children here, she says very clearly that of course, it is very little amount for me. Of course, that is very little amount for me compared to the village I worked for. But we can depend on him. Whenever there is work, he will call us. So that's why though he gives less amount, like we are okay with that. Unlike others, he does not go looking for cheaper laborer from other villages. So others would be looking for cheaper laborers from other villages. But he would not do that. My husband, Raman, is also a laborer. We don't own any land. During this time of the year, he sprays pesticides. When there is no work on the farm, he finds work outside, either loading sand from the river or stone from the quarry nearby. So here, children, she shares about her husband also. So here, her husband, Raman, is also a laborer. And she says that they don't own any land, right? And she says during this time of the year, he sprays pesticides. So he as Raman is also a laborer, so he sprays pesticides. Pesticides, why do, why do they spray pesticides? Okay, without any insects or worms eating that particular plant or the particular harvest, so they spray these pesticides right to protect them so when there is no work on the farm he finds work outside so either loading sand from the river or stone from the quarry quarry here is the quarry children where you can find like collecting uh, stones from the quarry is like they dig and they collect stones so she says that when there is no work he finds work outside either with the loading or loading the sand or like uh, from the stone from the quarry nearby. This is sent by truck to be used in nearby towns to make houses. So now she says that 
this whatever sand or whatever stones they collect is sent by trucks okay in nearby towns to make houses to construct houses okay the sand or the stones will be sent to nearby towns apart from working on the land i do all the tasks at home i cook food for my family clean the house and wash clothes i go with other women to the nearby forest to collect firewood now she says apart from this work okay apart from the work i do over here i even do all the home tasks so she says that she does every household work what are the household work like i cook food for my family she says that she cooks food for her family and clean the house and wash clothes right and i go with other women to the nearby forest to collect firewood she also goes to the forest to collect the firewood about 1 km away we have a village bore well from where i fetch water now she says that about 1 km away there's a bore well from there they fetch water see she collects firewood going to the forest she fetches water she cooks food and cleans house wash clothes clean dishes everything my husband helps in getting materials such as groceries for the house then she shares that her husband helps her in getting the groceries or other things to the house our school going daughters are the joy of our lives then she shares that our school going daughters their children are their joy they will be going to school last year one of them fell ill and had to be taken to the hospital in the town we had to sell our cow to pay back the money we borrowed from lamalingam for her treatment so here she says that one of her da daughters fell ill and had to be taken to the hospital in the town and we had to sell our cow she says that we had to sell our cow they sold their cow so that to pay back the money we borrowed from ramalingam for the treatment so that is how their lives are little difficult but their joy and happiness lies in their daughter's education and as you can see here we understood that she and her husband works so now based on the above diagram would you say that tulasi earns money throughout the year so as you can see when when the uh, agriculture work and transplanting starts so january to december months are given over here and here as you can see about the month of june preparing saplings would be there right preparing saplings and july august transplantation okay will be done and then september and october weeding will be done right weeding and november by december the harvest will be done right children so from june to december she will have work right but january february march april may five months she will not have any work right so based on this diagram we understand that maybe you can take like 6 months and 6 months right so half a year she'll be working and half 6 months she'll be working 6 months she'll not be working so that is how you can take this max sometimes 5 months she'll not be working 6 months she'll be working so tulsi earns money not throughout the year but only for 6 months right as you saw in tulsi's story poor families in rural areas often spend a lot of time every day collecting firewood as you can see women collecting firewood over here right children so as in tulsi's case we find many poor families in rural areas they collect firewood and spend much time in collecting firewood and also in getting water and in grazing their cattle they spend much time in all this even though they do not earn any money from these activities they have to do them for the household so though they do not get money from these works they need to do that for the household the family needs to spend time doing this as they are not able to survive on the little money they earn nearly 2/5 of all rural families are agricultural laborers in our country 
there are some more who have small plots of land while others like tulasi are landless so here the family needs to spend time doing this as they are not able to survive on little money right as they cannot survive on the little money what they get it is difficult for them so here they have they have to work and then they have to earn money so nearly 2/5 of the rural families are agricultural laborers in our country so that is why 2/5 of the rural families are doing this agricultural field works there are some who have small plots of land while others like tulasi are landless there are some people who have a certain land small piece of land but others there are some others who do not have land at all like tulasi they have to work in others land not being able to earn money throughout the year forces people in many rural areas to travel long distances in search of work so here what happens since they are not being able to earn money through the year and that forces people in many rural areas to travel long distances in search of work right and this travel of migration takes place during particular seasons so migration in the sense people as of livelihood they start moving to other place they leave their villages and they move to other place that is called as migration so this is all because of to earn livelihood or to live in a peaceful manner coming to next person he is shaker we have to carry this paddy to our house my family has just finished harvesting our field we don't own much land only 2 acres we manage to do all the work on our own now shaker speaks he says that we have to carry this paddy to our house he says that yeah we need to carry all this paddy to our house my family has just finished harvesting our field so after harvesting after everything is done right he says that we have just done with the harvesting and we need to carry them to our house we don't own much land only 2 acres he says that they he do not own much land he has only 2 acres and we manage to do all the work on our own he says that see all the agricultural work we manage to do by ourselves at times especially during the harvest i take the help of other small farmers and in turn help them harvest their field so these people what do they do in turns they start helping each other and they take help from other farmers so he helps other small farmers in turn they help them in the harvest time so the trader gave me seeds and fertilizers as a loan so the trader in that particular village he gave him seeds and fertilizers as a loan so to pay back this loan i have to sell my paddy to him at a somewhat lower price than what i would get in the market at somewhat lower price shaker needs to sell his paddy okay to because he had taken a loan from this trader so to fulfill it to to pay that loan back he need to sell his paddy to him to that trader in somewhat less price than in the market right and he has sent his agent to remind farmers who have taken loans that they will sell the paddy only to him so they need to sell the paddy only to him then that trader sent his agent to remind the farmers i will probably get 60 bags of paddy from my field so he says i would probably get how much 60 bags of paddy he said he gets only 60 bags of paddy some of this will i will sell to settle the loan so he says some of this i am going to sell to that trader to fulfill or to pay back my loan and then the rest will be used in my home but whatever i have will last only 8 months so i need to earn some more money i work in ramalingam's rice mill here i help him collect paddy from other farmers in the neighboring villages so here he shares his experience since this rest of the rice whatever he has it lasts only for 8 months right 
and like he needs some more money for his livelihood. So what does he do? So he earns money by working in Ramalingam's rice mill. So as you can see over here, right nearby rice mills and all you find all the paddy yeah in the gunny bags and all so now he works in the mill and here he helps him collect paddy from other farmers so that that would be profit to shaker we also have a hybrid cow and he says that we also have a hybrid cow whose milk we sell in the local milk cooperative this way we get a little extra money for our everyday needs so he shares that yes we have a hybrid cow from the milk which we get from that cow we sell that milk in local cooperative milk cooperative milk unit and then with that their everyday needs will be fulfilled he shares this with them on being in debit on being in debit what do you mean by on being in debit as you have read above, very often farmers like Shaker need to borrow money to purchase basic things like seeds, fertilizers and pesticides. Often they borrow this money from money lenders. So here what happens as we have seen the case of, yeah, uh, we have seen the case of Shaker and he needed to borrow money to purchase the basic things like seeds, fertilizers and pesticides. Right, children? So, for the harvest or the, for the agricultural purpose, he need to do all these things. He need to purchase. So, often they borrow this money from money lenders. Like who, without any delay, they give the money to those, to those farmers. If the seeds are not of good quality or pests attack their crop, there can be a major crop failure. Suppose, if the seeds are not of good okay crops or if if any pest attack insects or pest attack their crops then there will be a major crop failure right so the crops can be ruined if the monsoon does not bring enough rain even if there is not sufficient rain then also the crops can get ruined when this happens farmers sometimes are unable to pay back their loans if these things happen Farmers face real difficult times to pay back their loans. They are unable to pay back their loans. And then for the family to survive, they may even have to borrow for more money. They, may, they need to make sure the family is safe, right? For family is surviving. So for that, they will be borrowing money. Soon the loan becomes so large that no matter what they earn, they are unable to repay. So, whatever they earn, whatever they, okay, take, but this loan, okay, the borrowed amount will be huge again because of the interest, right? And this is when we can say they are caught in debt. So, that is how farmers are caught in debt in such cases. In recent years, this has become a major cause of distress among farmers. In some areas, this has also resulted in many farmers committing suicide. So, in recent years, what happened? This has become a major cause of distress among farmers and they started, okay, having suicide. Okay, they are dying with suicide. So, that is the reason they are committing suicide. As a result, they could not pay this debt. So, for that, they are committing suicide. Ramalingam and Karthama. Ramalingam and Kartama. Now let's see about Ramalingam and Kartama. In addition to land, Ramalingam's family owns a rice mill and a shop selling seeds, pesticides, etc. So in addition to Ramaling, uh, like their land, Ramalingam has his own rice mill and also pesticides shop, right? Where he sells seeds, pesticides in his shop. For the rice mill, they used some of their own money and also borrowed from the government bank. So, for the rice mill, how do they work with the rice mill? So, they use some of their own money and also, okay, they get loan from the bank, government bank. That is how they use for this rice mill. They buy paddy from within the village and from surrounding villages. The rice that is produced in the mill is sold to traders in nearby towns. This gives them a substantial income. So, here they buy paddy from the farmers within the village. 
right and also from the surrounding villages okay and the rice that is produced in mill is sold to home traders right in nearby towns and this gives them a substantial income this increases their income terrace farming in nagaland what is this terrace farming in nagaland now let's see one more uh, case study about terrace farming which is done in nagaland this is a village called chizami which is in peck district in nagaland right the people of this village belong to chakesang community they do terrace cultivation so these people who belong to chakesang community uh, in a village Chiz okay chizami the people in the village chizami they do this terrace cultivation as you can see over here this is how terrace cultivation looks like so yeah you can find step by step right so this is how terrace cultivation looks and this means that the land on a hill slope is made into flat so what happens here the land on the hill slope as you can see this is a hill right children so the land on this hill slope is flattened is made into flat plots and carved out into steps as i said it is carved out into steps step wise it is carved the sides of each plot are raised in order to retain water so the sides of each plot what they are raised in order to get the water this allows the waters to stand in the field which is best for rice cultivation so this type of cultivation is also best for rice cultivation since they raise these raise the okay land and here water flows and this types of uh, terrace farming results in giving best paddy crops the people of chizami have their own individual fields so what do they do in they have their own the people of chizami they have their own fields individual fields where they can do this cultivation but they also work collectively in each other's field they form groups of 6 or 8 and take an entire mountain side to clean the weeds on it so now as we can see though they have individual fields they they as a group or collectively they work together in others fields and they form groups of 6 to 8 and take an entire mountain side and they will make sure that all the weeds are cleared in that particular mountain side each group eats together once their work for the day is over this goes on for several days until the work is completed so what happens each group they they sit together they eat together once the work for the day is done and this goes on for several days until the work is completed so that is how they work for this terrace farming agricultural laborers and farmers in india now let's see the case of india right in our country in kalapattu village there are agriculture laborers like tulasi and many small farmers like shekar and a few big farmers like ramalingam in india nearly 2 out of every 5 rural families are agriculture laborer families so here what do we understand children like in kalapattu village there are agricultural laborers and like tulasi and many small farmers like shekar and few big farmers like ramalingam so we can find many people like this in india in india nearly 2 out of every 5 rural families are agricultural laborers right all of them depend upon the work they do on the other people's field to earn a living many of them are landless and others have others may own very small plots of land in the case of small farmers like shekar and their land is barely enough to meet their ends or needs so here all of them depend on the work they do in others fields right as you know as we have seen they start doing work okay for others field as i have already told like they have on work only for half of the year half of the year they'll be just simple doing other works right especially coming to agriculture they work in other people's field 
many of them are landless and others may have very small portion of plot or land for them to cultivate and in case small farmers like shaker their land is barely enough to meet their needs so that they need to work again work with another opportunities in india 80% of farmers belong to this group only 20% of india's farmers are like ramalingam so here in our country india so 80% of farmers belong to this group of okay especially uh, laborers of the field right and only 20% of the farmers of india are like ramalingam they they have the opportunities and they work like ramalingam only 20% whereas 80% work with others and these large farmers cultivate most of the land in the villages a large part of their produce is sold in the market so here the farmers whose land is very huge or more in number so what do they do they produce large part from their land and then they sell it in the markets and get profits many of them have started other businesses such as shops money lending trading small factories etc we have looked at farming at kalapattu apart from farming many people in rural areas depend upon collection from forest animal husbandry dairy produce fishing etc so here many of them started their own businesses such as shops money lending trading small factories etc so especially we have looked at farming in kalapattu apart from farming what are the other opportunities where people can work see rural areas depend upon collection from the forest so what do they collect from the forest like you get timber from the forest yes sandalwood like you get firewood from the forest and you get many types of fruits from the forest and you get honey from the forest rubber from the forest so what do they do they go and collect them right and animal husbandry so this is animal husbandry as you can see over here like where they have so many cows yeah so many buffaloes so that they can get milk and like milk products like uh, ghee butter milk curd so all these things are done and dairy produce yes and also fishing like as you can see they start selling the animals also and dairy is dairy farming is very prominent one nowadays right children and now for example in some village villages in central india both farming and collection from the forest are important sources of livelihood so as we can see here in some villages we can find that they collect all these things from the forest mahua is collected from the forest tendu leaves honey so as you can see okay these are the things which can be collected from the forest and they can be sold to traders and is an important source of additional income this is how they increase their additional income similarly selling milk to the village cooperative society or taking milk to the nearby town may be the main source of livelihood for some families in the coastal areas we find fishing villages so here especially dairy okay what do they do they sell the milk taking the milk to the nearby towns and they sell it yeah and then they make their livelihood from the milk and then in coastal areas especially fishing is the major occupation right children they depend upon fishing let us find out more about the lives of fishing family by reading about aruna and parivelan who lives in pudupet a village close to kalapattu now let's see some of the people about aruna and parivelan not very far from kalapattu is the village of pudupet people have earned their living by fishing their houses are close to the sea and one finds rows of catamarans and nets lying around so especially in pudupet so you find people who are earn their living by fishing you find nets everywhere you find catamarans rows and nets lying everywhere about 7 o'clock in the morning there is lot of activity on the beach okay at 7 o'clock itself they start doing 
This is the time when catamarans return with their catch and women gather to buy and sell fish. Right? That is the time at 7 o'clock in the morning. This is the time where the activity in the beach starts. And this is the time when catamarans return to their catch and women gather to buy and sell fish. My husband, Parivelan, my brother and my brother-in-law return late today. Now she is explaining about her experience. I was very worried. They go to the sea together in our catamaran. They said they were caught in a storm. I have kept aside some fish for the family. So now she says that her husband, Parivelan and brother and brother-in-law, they return very late today because of the storm. And she was very much worried and she kept fish aside for the family and now she says that i will auction the rest right the money i get from the auction will be divided into four shares then auction starts whatever money she gets from the auction will be divided into four shares one each for each person who went fishing and the fourth one is for the equipment so here four shares will be done each like one share for each person and last one for the equipment since we own the catamaran engine and nets we get the share too now she she says that since the equipment is ours we get that share also we have taken a loan from bank and purchased the engine she says that they have taken loan from the bank and they have purchased the engine which is fixed on to the catamaran. Now they can go far into the sea so that they can get a better catch. The women who buy fish here will carry them in basket to be sold in nearby villages. So now she says that they purchased engine and fixed the catamaran so that they can go long into the sea so that they can get a better catch or better fish. And then this woman who buys uh, fishes here, she carries to the villages nearby. And then there are others like traders who buy for shops in the town. I'll only fish this auction by noon. So she says that auction will be finished by the noon. And in the evening, my husband and our relatives were untangle and repair nets. And early morning, around 2 a.m., they will set to the sea again. So that is how their life is. Again in the evening, they start repairing their nets and stitching their nets and everything will be done. Again in the morning 2 a.m., again they will go to the sea. Every year for at least about four months during the monsoon, they cannot go to the sea. So usually in the rainy season, they cannot go out. Okay, And during these months, we survive by borrowing from the traders. She says that they borrow money from the traders. Because of this, later on, we are forced to sell the fish to that trader and cannot do our auction. Those lean months are the most difficult. Last year, we suffered a lot because of tsunami. So, children, you all know about tsunami, right? So, that is how they suffered most with that. Rural livelihoods. People in rural areas earn their living in various ways. Some work on farms while others earn their living by non-farming activities. So, some work in their farm, others do the non-farming activities, which involves operations such as preparing the land, sowing, weeding and harvesting of crops. So, all these works they will be doing and others depend upon non-farming work. We depend on nature for the growth of these crops. Hence, life revolves around certain seasons. People are busy during sowing and harvesting and less so at odd other times. So, like here, as you can see over here, she says that, see, life just revolves around certain seasons. So, according to the season, they are busy doing the harvest and fishing and other things. Rural people in different regions in the country grow different crops. However, we do find similarities in their lives and situations and in the problems that they face. How people are able to survive or earn will depend upon the land that they cultivate. It depends on the land. On Based on the land, we understand and seasons. We understand how and which crop is grown. 
Many people depend on their lands for working as laborers. Most farmers grow crops both on their requirements and also to sell in the market. So that is how some sell to the uh, traders. Yes, some crops are sold to the traders and some for their sales. And from whom they have borrowed money. Since they have borrowed money, they have to give them. For their survival, many families need to borrow money for their work. When there is no work available, they, have, they will borrow, right? When there is no work. There are some families in rural areas which thrive on large acres of land, businesses and other activities. So, that is how they survive or the rural livelihood takes place. However, most small farmers, agricultural laborers, fishing families, craftsperson in the village do not find enough work to keep them employed throughout the year. So, they do different kinds of works to keep them employed. Hello students, welcome back to another amazing session of social only on Classroom TV. So students, in today's class, we would be dealing with interesting topic that is chapter 9 and the social and political life 1. That's all about urban livelihoods, urban livelihoods. So in previous class, we have dealt with rural livelihood, right? The life of people or the livelihood or the occupation of the people in villages. So in today's class, we would be dealing about the people in the city and their occupation and their livelihood. So let's begin this wonderful lesson. There are more than 5000 towns and 27 big cities in India. Big cities like Chennai, Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, etc. have more than a million people living and working here. So now, as we all know, this is our map and in our country, as we can see, there are many, like you can find more than 5000 towns and 27 big cities in our country, right? Like there are big cities like Chennai. Where do you find Chennai? In Tamil Nadu, right children? So this is Tamil Nadu and you find Chennai, find Chennai over there, right? And you also have Mumbai. Where do you find Mumbai? Mumbai is in Maharashtra. Right, this is Maharashtra and Mumbai is over here, right? And next is Delhi, Delhi here, here is Delhi, right? And next one is Kolkata. So, you find Kolkata in West Bengal, right? So, here is West Bengal and here is Kolkata. There are many big cities like these which I have pointed now. So, we have more than a million people living and working here. There are many people, more than a million people who are actually living in these big cities and working here in these special cities. They say that the city never sleeps. Let's visit one and find out about the work people do in the city. Are they employed by someone? Or are they self-employed? How do they organize themselves? And do they have similar employment and earning opportunities? So here, this is how a city looks. So as you can see, as they say that the city never sleeps. You can see that. Why do they say city never sleeps? Because all the day and the night, traffics will be there and you can find all the lights always shining very brightly even if it is night and you can hear the sound of the traffic even if it is night. So, that's the reason they say that the city never sleeps, right? And so, now let's visit one and find out about the work of the people. What are the various works or employments of the work people do and how do they do that and whether they are self-employed or employed by someone. So, with all these things, with all these interesting facts, let's start this wonderful lesson, Urban Livelihoods. Working on the street. Let's start with working on the street. This is the city where my cousin lives. I have been here for a few times. It's a very big city. Once, when I came here, my cousin took me around. We left the house early in the morning. So, here, 
one uh, small boy, he shares his experience. He says that this is the city where my cousin lives. His cousin, she lives in this city. And I have been here only a few times. He says that I have been only here for few times. But once as I was here, my cousin took me around to see the entire city and the beauty of the city. And here is how he explains. As we turned the corner onto the main street, we saw that it was already buzzing with activity. As they were just crossing that street, right? They found that it was already buzzing with the activity. So, people started roaming already in the morning. The vegetable vendor was buying, was busy arranging tomatoes, carrots and cucumbers in baskets at her stall so that people could see what she had to sell. So, here you can find fruit stall, vegetable stalls and here this boy, he identifies or he finds out that people are already doing their activities. They are busy setting their baskets and making everything ready for the day. Next to her stall was a lovely colorful one that sold all kinds of flowers. So, here next to that stall, there was a flower selling shop and here we bought a red rose and a yellow rose. On the pavement opposite, we have we saw a person selling newspapers. So, here next opposite to what they have seen, opposite of the pavement, they have seen that a person was selling the newspapers, right? With a small crowd of people around him. Small crowd of people were around him. So, this is how as the narrator... Okay, as the person, that boy, as he just crosses the street, he sees all the people starting their daily activities. Everyone wanted to read the news. Buses whizzed past and there were auto rickshaws filled with school children. Nearby, under a tree, a cobbler sat taking his tools and materials out of a small tin box. So, now everyone wanted to read the news, right? Buses whizzed past and there were auto rickshaws filled with school children as you can see. Children will be, would be traveling and then they found buses and there was a cobbler shop where one was repairing, okay, the shoe or the slipper of the child and he was actually taking the materials in and out from his box. Next to him, the roadside barber had begun his work. As you can see here, next to him, the barber had already started his work and he already had a customer who wanted an early morning shave a little way down the road. As you can see over here, early morning itself, there was a customer who was waiting for the barber to have a nice shave. So, that is how a little way down the road they started to go slowly. A woman was pushing along a, car, along a cart with all kinds of plastic bottles, boxes, hairpins, clips, etc. And as you can see, okay, women, she was selling balloons, hairbands, clips, bottles, everything. In it, while another person on a cycle trolley, he was carrying vegetables. So, as you can see, one more person carrying vegetable. Okay, vegetables in the trolley and he was just moving around shouting, okay, about the vegetables, right? We came to a place where rickshaws were standing in a row waiting for customers. So, and finally, they came to a way where auto rickshaws were fully, okay, standing in a row. As you can see over here, they're just in line, right? They were actually waiting for the customers to come. We decided to take one to the market which was about 2 kilometers down the road. So, then what happened? They took a rickshaw, right? They took a rickshaw and then which was about, they, they went to the market which was about 2 kilometers away from that, down that road. Like Bachu Manji, a large number of people in the city work on the streets. Now, if you want to know about this Bachu Manji, just... Uh, uh, like imaginary image of um, the work he does, okay? See here, large, like I'll explain about Bachu Manji in detail, but before that, let's read this. There are large number of people in the city 
who work on the streets. In a survey of Ahmedabad city, it was found that 12% of all workers in the city were people working on the street. They sometimes sell things or repair them or provide a service. But somehow we understand that in a survey of Ahmedabad city, 12% of all the workers in the city, they do some or the other work in on the street. They work on their own. They are not employed by anyone and therefore have to organize their own work. So now we understand that they are not employed by anyone. They work on their own so that they have to organize and plan. Okay, plan their things and then they have to work out. How much to purchase as well as where and how to set up their shops. That's how they need to plan and work out regarding all these things. Their shops are usually temporary structures. So as you can see here, their shops are sometimes only a temporary structures. See, you, if you want, you can remove them. See here, they have put, how do you construct a temporary shop here? They have put a base or a foundation, a stick. And then, like as you can see up, they have put a cloth, right? So that they can be protected by wind or rain, yeah? Especially the items which they sell. Sometimes just some boards or papers spread over discarded boxes or maybe a canvas sheet hung up on a few poles. So that is how they sell in their temporary shops. They may also use their own carts or simply a plastic sheet spread on the pavement. Sometimes they can use their own cart and sometimes what happens? They just spread a sheet on the pavement, right? They can be asked to dismantle their shops at any time by the police. So, police can come there and at any time, if they are asked to dismantle, they need to dismantle any time from there. They have no security. There are certain parts of the city where these hawkers are not allowed to enter. So, in certain parts of the city, these hawkers are not allowed to enter. Vendors sell things that are often prepared at home by their families who purchase, clean, sort and make them ready to sell. For example, those who sell food or snacks on the street prepare most of these at home. So children, as you can see here, you can find uh, a woman who is preparing chapatis over here. So you all know, as an example, I have taken this picture. So as she prepares these things at home, and like they are prepared and like how do they prepare uh, chapati children first raw material yeah all the floor should be put and then they should make a dove and then they should knead it like this and then they should bake it so that is how they prepare right so after all this process what happens they take them to the market areas and they sell them sometimes the like where they stay and the area also like just there itself they sell the things there are almost one crore street vendors in the country working in urban areas almost one crore street vendors you can find in our country almost working in urban areas street vending was still recently looked upon only as an obstruction to traffic and to people walking so here street vending the vendors on the street was still recently looked upon only as an obstruction to traffic and also for the people walking. However, with the effort of many organizations, it is now recognized as a general benefit and as a right of people to earn their livelihood. So, in olden days, what happened? The vendors who sell on streets, they were treated very low. They, they like the people thought them as the obsession for the traffic. Okay, these people are just coming, okay, in between the traffic. But nowadays, okay, however, with the effort, many organizations of many organizations came forward and with the effort of many organizations, it is now recognized as that work, what they do is a general benefit and a right of people to earn their livelihood. 
Understood, children? The government is thinking about modifying the law that banned street vendors so that they have a place to work and there is also free flow of traffic and people. So, government is still working on it so that they also can earn for their livelihood. Hawking zones have been suggested for towns and cities. So, hawking zones, as you can see, the like especially in these hawking zones, like people keep their things, especially in towns and cities, these hawking zones are suggested. And it is it has also been suggested that mobile vendors should be allowed to move around freely. Who are mobile vendors? A vendor one who moves from one place to another place to sell his goods. He is called as mobile vendor. Right? So, here mobile vendors should be allowed freely to move around so that they can earn for their livelihood. Hawkers need to be part of committees that are set up to take these and other decisions relating to them. Now, coming to hawkers. Hawkers need to be part of committees that are set up and to take these and these decisions relating to them. So, they have their own community hawkers community so that they can take decisions relating to them. Bachu Manji, as I said, I would be telling about Bachu Manji. So, who is he? He is a cycle rickshaw puller. So, as you can see here, this is an imaginary picture of Bachu Manji. So, here he is a cycle rickshaw puller. So, children, I come from a village in Bihar where I worked as a mason. He shares his experience. He comes from a village from Bihar and he worked as a mason. So, where they construct the house, right? Mason work. So, my wife and three children live in the village. We don't own land. In the village, I did not get masonry work regularly. The income that I earned was not enough for our family. So, now he started speaking or saying that he had three children. And whatever he earns from that masonry work was not enough for the family income. Whatever income he gets, it's not enough for their livelihood. Since he had three children, so his wife and his three children live in the village. So, what happened? After I reached the city, I bought an old cycle rickshaw and paid for it in installments. So, what he did? He bought an old cycle rickshaw as you can see over here. And he paid it in installments right and this was many years ago i come to the bus stop every morning and take the customers wherever they want to go so every morning he comes to the bus stop and wherever the passengers or the customers wanted to go he drops them there i work till 8 30 in the evening he says that he works till 8 30 in the evening i take rides of up to six kilometers in the surrounding area each customer gives me 10 to 30 rupees per trip depending on the distance when i am ill i can't do this work so on those days i don't earn anything so here he says that so he'll be working till 8 30 in the evening and he takes rides of up to 6 kilometers radius right and then he earns 10 to 30 rupees per person like it, de it depends upon the distance right and when I'm still, uh, when I'm ill, I can't do this work. So, on those days, I don't earn anything. He says that whenever he is ill or whenever he is sick, he cannot work, right? So, on those days, he'll be on, off or leave. I stay with my friends in a rented room. So, in a rented room, he stays with his friends and they work in a nearby factory. I earn between 200 to 300 rupees every day out of which I spend 100 to 150 on food and rent. The rest I save for my family. So, now what he says is, see, he earns between 200 rupees to 300 rupees every day and his friends work in a nearby factory and because they have a rented room and where they can share, see, he spends 100 to 150 rupees on food and rent right and the rest he saves for his family so that is how he lives i visit my village two or three times a year to see my family he says that two or three times a year he visits his village to see his family 
Though my family survives on the money I send, my wife also earns from agricultural work that she gets once in a while. So here he is saying that though the family survives on the amount what uh, he sends, but still his wife, she earns by doing agricultural work whenever it is available in the market. So coming to the market area now. Now, coming back to that boy, the narrator. When we reached the market, the shops were just beginning to open. But the place was already crowded because of the festival season. So, as you can see here, as they came to the marketplace, see the shops were just opening, but it was too crowdy because of the festival season. And there were rows and rows of shops selling sweets, toys, clothes, footwear and utensils, electronic goods, etc. So, all the items are laid over there and people are buying and selling things, all the things. There was a dentist clinic also at one end. My cousin had an appointment with the den dentist. So now there was a dentist clinic at the end and his cousin had an appointment and they both went there for the first time so that they would not miss our turn. So they went there and then they, as they would not miss their turn, they were actually waiting and then she was called inside after a while. The dentist examined her and asked her to come back the following day to get a cavity in her tooth filled. So here as you can see here the dentist worked on her teeth and then to fill the cavity in her tooth okay she asked her to come the next day also. My cousin was scared because she thought the process would be painful and was upset that she had allowed her teeth to go bad. So here. His cousin was really upset by thinking about the process. She thought it would be very painful and was very upset that she had allowed her teeth to go bad. From the dental clinic, she took me to a new garment showroom because I wanted to buy some ready-made clothes. They went to the showroom. The showroom had three floors. So, they went to the showroom where it had three floors in it. And each floor had different types of clothes. So, each floor had different types of clothes. Maybe one for women, sections would be different. One for men and one for kids. So, that is how. We went to the third floor where clothes for girls were kept. So, they went there. Harpreet and Vandana, business persons. So now let's see about these business persons. My father and uncle worked in a small shop during festival times and on Sundays. My mother and I helped them in the shop. I started working there only after I completed my college. Harpreet. So Harpreet started saying that about, okay, his father and uncle worked in a small shop. During festival times and on Sundays, mother and this Harpreet also helped in the shop. Right, And they started working there only after they completed their college. And we opened the showroom some years ago. I am a dress designer. Our business has changed. These days, people prefer to buy ready-made clothes rather than have them stitched. The trend these days is for ready-made garments. You also need an attractive display for them, Vandana. So now, they started speaking about that showroom. So, somehow as they started or opened that showroom, right, uh, some years ago, the trend was said that people buy most of the ready-made clothes and then they, rather than stitching, they would prefer the ready-made clothes, right. For our showroom, we buy things from different places. We buy most of the materials from Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Ludhiana and Tripur. Some materials also come from Noida and Gurgaon, towns near Delhi. We get some dress items from foreign countries also. So now they started explaining about from where they get these things. So they get these materials from Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Ludhiana and Tripur. And some of the materials also come from Noida, Gurgaon and towns like Delhi. So, they get all these things from foreign countries also. We get some dress items from foreign countries too. There are several things we need to do to run the showroom properly. So, she says that to run the showroom properly, they need to take care of 
many things. We advertise in various newspapers, cinema theatres, televisions and radio channels. She says that they need to give a proper advertisement for the people to come and purchase in them. So, you know the importance of advertisement, right children? Especially newspapers, radios and TVs. So, everything will be covered, right? That is how you can reach people in huge manner. Currently, this building is rented but soon we plan to buy it. Ever since this market has become the main market for people living in the surrounding apartments, our business has grown. We have been able to buy a car and book a flat in an apartment complex nearby. She shares that though their building is rented at present, they are planning to take that or buy that particular building. And since the okay this this showroom is in the main area this their business has also increased and they have bought a car for themselves and also they bought an apartment complex nearby a flat in an apartment complex nearby and like harpreet and vandana there are many people who own shops in various markets of the city these shops may be small or large and they sell different things in them right and most business persons manage their own shops or businesses. Some people will have their own business shops. Okay, they depend upon it directly. They are not employed by anyone, but they do employ a number of other people. So, they have their own shops and they give employment to many other people. Workers as supervisors and helpers, they ask people to help them. These are permanent shops that are given a license to do a business by municipal corporation. The municipal corporation also decides on which day of the week the market has to remain closed. So, here these are the permanent shops, right, that are given license. So, that municipal corporation people will allow them to sell their products. And municipal corporation also decides on which day of the week the market has to remain closed. So, that also they would be deciding. So, here for example, the shops in above market are closed on Wednesdays. So, on Wednesdays, these shops are, will be closed. This market also has small offices and shop that provide services such as banks, courier services and other services also. So, it is based on when the government allows them to close their shops. In the factory workshop area, in the factory workshop area, I wanted to have Zari work done on one of my dresses which I needed for the special occasion. So, Zari work is very famous one. So, here the narrator wanted to, wanted this work to be done on her dress and then my cousin said that she knew Nirmala who works in a garment factory. Nirmala's neighbors do zari work and embroidery. So, that they went over there. For that, they caught a bus and headed towards the factory area. So, here the bus was really crowded. As you can see the city buses, they would be really crowded like this. Yes, at every stop more and more people got and hardly anyone seemed to get off. Right? In every stop people keep on adding. Okay? Maybe 10 members, they come inside but what about the per, the people who get off the bus no one one or two so that's the reason it is fully crowded with people people were pushing others to make more space for themselves so my cousin guided me to a corner so that we would not get squashed right and i wondered how i wondered how people travel like this every day as the bus entered the factory area, people started getting off. We also got off soon at the crossing. What a relief that was. So, when everyone gets off the bus and when, when we also get off the bus, it is a great relief, right? Yes. And there were a large number of people sitting on railings or in other groups at the crossing. So, as you can see, uh, okay, as they can see, the people at the railing, there were many large people standing and sitting there. They seemed to be waiting for someone. So, they were actually waiting for someone. Some groups had people on scooters standing by and talking to them. So, that is how they are seen. 
my cousin explained that this place was called labor chowk so that is called as labor chowk these were daily wage laborers who work as helpers to masons they dig at construction sites lift loads and unload trucks in the market and they dig pipelines and telephone cables and also build roads so they are the daily wage workers so they work in the in this particular area called labor chok they come and stand and from there they get distracted okay wherever they are assigned about the work there are thousands of such casual workers in the city we entered the factory area to find it full of small workshops and there seemed to be endless rows of them in one section i saw people working in small room on sewing machine where cloth was being stitched so this is how they started entering the factory area and one person operated one sewing machine as they went into that particular area they saw that one person operated one sewing machine right and clothes that had been stitched were staked on one side of the room so whatever they stitch they are set at one side of the room we located nirmala in the stitching unit she was happy to meet my cousin and promised to get zari work done on my dress so that is how they got their work done especially in the in factory area nirmala works as a tailor in an export garment unit that was a export garment unit right they they export garments to other cities the factory where she works makes summer clothes for people in foreign countries so here export in the sense like here they export these garments to the people in different countries also foreign countries like usa uk germany and netherlands right children since they were working on summer clothes they export these clothes to other foreign countries workers like nirmala have to work very long hours in the month from december to april a normal working day begins at 9 am and finishes only by 10 pm sometimes even later she works for 6 days a week now here the narrator explains us about the work workers like nirmala have the work very long see workers like nirmala have to work for very long hours they start by 9 am in the morning and 10 pm in the evening they have 6 days of week so one day is off for them right so that is how sometimes if it is um, uh, like rushy time then they need to if they have much work they need to work even later of 10 pm also that's how they need to work At times when the work needs to be done urgently she works on Sundays too Nirmala is paid 280 rupees a day for 8 hours and 100 rupees extra for working late by June the work is over and the factory reduces its staff so here she will be paid 280 rupees per day for 8 hours and 100 rupees extra for whatever uh, like extra hours she works right children and by june the work is over and the factory reduces its employees nirmala will also be asked to leave for about 3 or 4 months in the year there is no work for her most workers like nirmala are employed on what is known as casual basis that is they are required to come as and when the employer needs them so whenever the employer needs them they are required to come to the particular area and they need to work only then they are employed they are employed when the employer gets large orders or during certain seasons so here whenever the employer gets large orders then only he calls them for work at other times of the year they have to find some other work jobs like nirmala's are not permanent they are not permanent jobs they need to seek for other jobs whenever they are free if workers complain about their pay or working conditions they are asked to leave in certain cases whenever if they complain about their pay or working conditions the time is too long right if they complain regarding them they are asked to just leave the job 
there is no job security or protection if there is ill treatment there is no job security in these areas they are also expected to work very long hours so that is how this work will be taken place in urban areas for example in the cloth mill units so this is the cloth mill as you can see very huge cloth mill right so the workers work on day and night shift with each shift lasting 12 hours so they'll have two shifts some will be working day shift for day shift and some will be working for night shift so each shift will be having 12 hours each one worker works on one machine for 12 hours and then he is replaced by another on the same machine for the next 12 hours so that's how they work on it in the office area my aunt Sudha works as marketing manager. So here in the office area, uh, their aunt works as a marketing manager. She had asked us to reach her office before 5:30 p.m. We thought we would get late, so we took an auto rickshaw that managed to get us there just in time. So somehow they went by 5:30. Her office was in an area surrounded by tall buildings. There were hundreds of people coming out. Some headed for the car park while others went towards the row of buses. My aunt is a marketing manager in a company which manufactures biscuits. So, she works as a ma marketing manager. The factory where the biscuits are made is outside the city so where the biscuits are made is outside the city actually and she supervises the work of 50 sales person who travel to different parts of the city and they get orders from the shopkeepers and collect payments from them so she assists the sale people right she supervises the sale people and they assist her in doing this job She has divided the city into six regions and once a week she meets the sale persons of each region so she checks their progress reports and discusses problems they face so here she has divided the city into six sections okay regions once a week she meets the sales persons of each region and she clarifies their doubt and she sees that the work is in progress and she has to plan the sales in the entire city and often has to work late and travel to different places so she has a lot of work to do she gets a regular salary every month and is a permanent worker in the company so she is a regular worker who gets a who has a permanent job and also a regular salary she can expect her job to continue for long period of time being a permanent worker she also gets other benefits such as following so what are they savings for old age yeah a part of her salary is kept in fund with the government so these are the benefits which she receive okay in further days she will earn interest on these savings when she retires from this job she will get this money and she can then live on that so that is how uh, she is a permanent worker and she is benefited with this job and coming to holidays she gets off on sundays and national holidays so on sundays and national holidays she is in off she also gets some days as annual leave so annual leaves are also there medical facilities for her family so here her company pays the medical expenses up to a certain amount of her and her family members so she gets medical leave if she falls ill and her salary is not cut if she takes this leave so here if at all she is not not well she if at all she is sick or ill she gets she can take this medical leave and her salary will not be cut especially in those days There are many workers in the city who work in offices, factories and government departments where they are employed as regular earned permanent workers. So they attend the same office or factory regularly. So here we can find there are many people who work in factories especially in offices and government departments where they are employed in a regular manner and they are called as permanent workers permanent workers they attend the same office or factory regularly their work is clearly identified they get a regular salary unlike casual workers they will not be asked to leave if the factory does not have much work 
So that is how factory workers they'll not have regular work but unlike them these government or departments or offices they'll be asked they'll not be asked to leave right they have a regular work and at the end of the day we got into aunt's car exhausted so somehow finally they got into their car exhausted but it had been so much fun and I thought how interesting that so many people do so many different things in the city they have probably never met each other but it is their work that ties them together and helps to make up city life finally she understands that it is all about city and the employment or the livelihood okay in the urban area is like this and uh, it's very fun seeing people of from different parts coming together right children but they have not probably met each other but it is their work that ties them together and help them to make the city life better so children i hope you enjoyed today's class so make sure you read the lesson once again right children for the videos of other subjects you can visit our website www.classroomtv.in stay tuned and thank you